welcome back to Explaining Everything, the channel where we dive into the stories and mysteries behind everyday things. Today's question comes from one of our curious viewers, TechieTom98. Thanks for the suggestion, Tom. You asked, why are batteries called double A and triple A and not A or B? It's something we've all noticed but never really questioned. We use double A and triple A batteries constantly. But where did A and B go? Did they ever exist? Or did someone just skip them like an awkward family member at a reunion? Let's find out what really happened to the missing batteries right here on Explaining Everything. To understand how we ended up with this confusing battery alphabet, we have to go way back to the early 1900s when batteries were basically the Wild West. There was no standard size, no universal naming system, and definitely no consistency. Each company made their own shapes and sizes, and every gadget seemed to need a completely different kind of battery. Buying batteries back then must have been a nightmare. You couldn't just grab a pack off the shelf. You had to know which random size your radio used, and chances were it only worked with the ones made by the same company. Finally, in 1919, the National Bureau of Standards stepped in to bring order to the chaos. They created a system that categorized batteries using simple letters, A, B, C, and D. The idea was straightforward. A was the smallest standard size, and the letters went up as the batteries got larger. For the first time, people could actually buy batteries knowing what they were getting. It was a big win for organization and sanity. Everything was neat and logical for about five minutes. Then technology did what technology always does. It changed everything. By the 1940s, electronics were getting smaller. Radios, flashlights, and new gadgets were shrinking fast. And suddenly, even the A battery was too bulky to fit inside them. Engineers needed a power source that was the same shape, but slimmer and lighter. Now, they could have started a new naming system altogether. Maybe call the smaller one A1 or Mini A. But instead, they went with something that sounds like a toddler naming their toy, double A. And when they made one smaller than that, they called it triple A. It sounds lazy, but it actually made sense at the time. The new batteries were still based on the A size, just thinner versions of it. So double A literally meant a smaller A. And when they made one smaller still, they naturally went with triple A. It's the naming equivalent of copy, paste, shrink. It worked, people understood it, and that was that. Over time, the double A battery became the go-to for most household gadgets. The triple A battery followed right behind, becoming the choice for smaller devices like remotes and electric toothbrushes. Meanwhile, the original A battery, the one that started it all, quietly disappeared from store shelves replaced by its more popular, slimmer descendants. So, what about the missing ones? What happened to A and B batteries? Did they ever even exist? They did, for a while. The original A battery was real, but it didn't last long. It was caught in that awkward middle ground. Too big for small electronics, too small for larger ones. It didn't have a niche, so once double A and triple A were invented, there wasn't much reason for anyone to keep using it. Manufacturers stopped producing it, and it quietly faded out of everyday use. The B battery, on the other hand, actually had a very specific job back in the early 20th century. 
it was used in old tube radios, not to power the device entirely, but to provide the high voltage current for the radio's vacuum tubes. If you've ever seen the term B battery in old technical manuals, that's what it was for. But when transistors replaced vacuum tubes in the 1950s, those old radios became obsolete. And so did the B battery. Without a purpose, it vanished too. Meanwhile, C and D batteries stuck around because they were perfect for larger devices that needed more power, like flashlights and toys. The A and B sizes simply didn't fit into the new world of electronics. They weren't mysterious. They were just unnecessary. At this point, you might wonder why we never just fixed the naming system. If the A and B batteries disappeared, why didn't we start fresh and rename everything to make sense again? Well, by the time double A and triple A became standard, it was too late. They were everywhere, printed on packaging, manuals, electronics, and even molded onto battery compartments. Changing the names would have been a logistical nightmare. It would have confused consumers, cost manufacturers millions, and served no real benefit. So instead of correcting the weirdness, the world just said, it just works. And honestly, it kind of does. Everyone knows what a double A battery is. Everyone knows what a triple A is. The system is weird, but universally understood. And let's be real, saying double A sounds cool. It rolls off the tongue. Imagine replacing it with something boring, like size two. That sounds like you're buying pants, not powering your flashlight. So the naming stuck, not because it was logical, but because it was familiar. Once something works, even if it's weird, humans rarely bother changing it. So, to wrap it all up, the reason batteries are labeled double A and triple A instead of A or B comes down to history, convenience, and a little bit of laziness. The letter started as a simple size system back in 1919. Then technology demanded smaller versions, so engineers doubled and tripled the A's. The original A and B batteries eventually became obsolete, leaving only their alphabetically confused cousins behind. And even though the system doesn't make much sense now, it's one of those quirks we've all just accepted. After all, if the thing works, who cares what it's called? If you enjoyed this video, or if you now have a newfound appreciation for the battery names, leave a like and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for tuning in and join us next time here in the channel that answers all the why, what, who, where, and how questions you've always wondered about here on Explaining Everything.